Hey, my brothers and sisters, I wasn't going to talk about this, but then it just started to really bug me. And so I just, I feel like I, I gotta say something. The Democrats are, as a party, I'm not going to, to blame everybody that's a part of the Democratic Party because they're obviously misguided if they are good people and they're, they're actually, you know, joined in with this lot. But the Democratic Party itself is just evil. They always have been. They seem to always will be. And they want to systematically destroy what America is built on, what America was created for. And it's obvious, it, you, there's plenty of history that they're, they're just, it's just an evil party. Not saying that the Republicans are perfect, because people always bring that up, yeah, well, Republicans do this too, and they do this too, do this, do this too. Please, you're being disingenuous. If you look at it in scope and scale, the Democratic Party is evil. They just are, to the core. And so when I see stuff like this, and I'm in California. I'm a California boy, born and bred. I'm from South City. Now I, I live further east, closer to the Sierras now, but I'm, I, I still, I'm, I'm a Golden Gate boy through and through. And so when I see stuff like this, California's indoor mask mandate is slated to expire later this month, but not for everyone. Why would it not be for everyone? You might ask. Let's dive in. Let's go right to the governor's tweet. This narcissistic sociopath, let's see what he had to say. California, California's case rate has decreased by 65% since our Omicron peak. Our hospitalizations have stabilized across the state. You notice he doesn't say why. Why has it decreased? He doesn't even say. Why is it, why is the hospitalizations, why is it stabilized across the state? You see how he doesn't even say? <laughs> Our statewide indoor mask requirement will expire on February 15th. Unvaccinated people will still need to wear masks indoors. Get vaccinated, get boosted. Unvaccinated people will still need to wear masks indoors. Who's going to police that? How are you going to know who is vaccinated and who isn't? Do you, do you see where this could potentially go? Right? Because there's no way to police it. There's no way to know. So then do you go, do you use this as a way to push for the passport here. That's the only way that you would know is, is if you require proof from the people entering into these establishments, right? I mean, how else, how else are you gonna, how else are you going to police it? I'm not vaccinated. I'm never going to be. Neither are my children. I also don't wear a mask anywhere at all, ever. The only time that I would even consider it is when flying. And that's only because thanks to the government, there's a monopoly on flying. All of the airlines fell into place. They go, oh, the private business, really? Delta is subsidized by the government to the tune of over $5 billion. You, you still think that Delta is a private industry? Please. They have a complete monopoly. They've centralized the power with regards to air travel, and they all are saying the same things. So if I want to fly anywhere, I have to wear a mask. That's not constitutional. That's not free market. And that's not private business just doing what they feel is right. Stop it. So it's the only time that I would because I can't drive to Hawaii. Do you see that's, that's blackmail. That's a way to impose your will on someone else when you leverage something that's needed for quality of life against the very people that you say that you're, you're, you're advocating for. Yeah, right. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> the indoor masking requirement will expire after February 15th, reverting to the previous guidance, which requires masking for unvaccinated individuals in all indoor public settings and required masking for all individuals, regardless of vaccination status in higher risk settings like public transit and congregate living. The California Department of Public Health noted in a press release is, is a high risk um, 
is a high risk setting an NFL football game? I'm, I'm just asking. Is a high risk setting NFL football game where the governor himself wasn't masked and then he lied about it and then there's actual photographic proof that he lied? Why are you guys, why, why did you vote not to recall this man? What has is, what is he done? What did he do in San Francisco that made your life better? Then you guys gave him the governorship. What has he done as governor that's made your life better? What has he done? Even before the whole C-19 fiasco, what, is, what has he done? He continuously shows you that he believes in a class system. He's an elite and you're not, and that's it. He continuously shows you that. Right? Because according to this, vaccinated still have to be masked in high-risk areas. I'm sure that he's saying that he's vaccinated. I'd love to see proof. But he wasn't wearing a mask in a high-risk area, unless he considers an NFL football game with thousands of people around not high-risk. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Omicron has loosened its hold on California. Vaccines for children under five are around the corner and access to C-19 treatments is improving. CDPH director and state public health officer, Dr. Thomas J. Aragon said in a statement, mask mandates have proven to be highly polarizing and controversial amid the coronavirus pandemic, particularly mandates requiring children to wear masks in schools. It's not the mask that is controversial. What's controversial and polarizing is the use of aggression and force. That's what's polarizing. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, we're just doing it for you guys, it's the best ever. Okay, so why are you using abuse and force and aggression to shove this down my throat if you really care about me? You think you're my daddy? Actually, my daddy doesn't treat me this way. But you think you're my daddy. Because once again, it comes back to class. It's never been about race. You guys have to understand this. It's never been about race. It's always about class with these folks. And there's only two classes. Funny mustache man felt the same way. It's always class. Because that's, that's, that's where, where Marx was. Very misguided, very troubled man who has infected so many people with his ideology that it always comes down to class. You know how I know? This is how I know it's always, it always comes down to class. Is that it always seems like it's people that are really rich, really affluent, really powerful that fall prey to this. Because psychologically, imagine this. Imagine if you're just, you know, a middle class boy from inner city. And, you know, your parents work. They do the best they can, but there's things that, that you don't have, things that you go without. And because this American is so great, you work really hard. You, maybe you, you start a business, maybe you invent something because America is so great and you can do that here. And that invention or that business grows and you go from being a millionaire or go from being middle class to a millionaire. And then more time passes and you expand, you make some really, really good moves. You have some good opportunities pop up that you're able to take advantage of. And then you go from a millionaire to a billionaire. Now as a billionaire, your, your world, it doesn't even really take a billion. I mean, I think once you get to like 50 million and up, you're, you get a different world. Your experience with this world is different. You're able now to fly wherever you want to fly, whenever you want to fly there. You don't have to go through TSA or anything like that. You could just walk into the tarmac and take a private jet. Where you go, you have employees and you have people that are relying on your income and your patronage to, you know, for, for them. So even if they don't directly work for you, if they work in hospitality. So now you're, you're staying in penthouse suites. Maybe you have multiple homes in different places. You basically have a different life. If you do get into trouble, you have a team of lawyers who can use the law and, and exploit any kind of loophole to, to make consequences for you go away. I can see how, from a psychological standpoint, how you start to, start to drink your own Kool-Aid and start to believe that it's the best tasting Kool-Aid you've ever had. And you start, you start to think to yourself, man, I'm, I'm the bomb, right? Like, I'm better than other people. I have such these great ideas. Look what I've been able to ascend to because America's so great. And you start thinking, well, you know, I should be in charge of, of everything. 
and people like me. And you seek out those folks and they think just like you, like, man, like, we, look at what we've been able to accomplish, right? We represent, like, like collectively, more than half the wealth in, on this entire planet. Like, look at what we've been able to accomplish. Look at how many people we employ, how many businesses that, that, that we get going. Look at how we can influence the, the, the global economy just based off if we sneeze, right? Look at all the governments that we can influence because of the sheer magnitude of our economic influence. Huh. And that's where that whole elitist mentality comes from. It seeps in. It's not a manifestation of character. It's a manifestation of narcissism. It's a manifestation of insecurity. Because when one is secure within themselves, they don't have any kind of compulsion or need to impose their will onto others. Even if they think that they're right, they respect other people as equals. But these folks don't believe that they're equals anymore. They believe that they're above because of what their accomplishments or what they were born into gives them access to. And so they start to believe that they should really be running everything. And these are the uber mensches. And everybody else is below. And these Ubers, they get together and they start to talk about and hash out how they could start to bring to fruition what their delusion has, has pointed to. So this is what I believe happens to them. And it's sad because they're so accomplished and they have all of these things and they, they're still, there's still a hole inside of them. They're still insecure. There's still something missing that they can't just enjoy. They can't enjoy their accomplishment and they can't be truly benevolent and, and really get into philanthropy because they want to help and they want to give back. This is not all, mind you. This is not all. Some do become multimillionaires and billionaires and they actually are secure and they're good people and they're decent and they have a good, good moral, moral you know, compass and good value structure. But you don't hear about these people because they, they just do good. There's no reason to hear about them. But it's the ones who are self-proclaimed elites, which is ridiculous in and of itself. They actually call themselves elites tells you what they believe, that they're ubermensch, they're elites. So what does that make us if we're not in their club? Do you see what I'm saying? And Governor Newsom has proven to be in that fraternity. And there's a lot of them in the Democratic Party and a lot of these elites support the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party is a much better weapon for them taking over their, global, their globalist agenda than the Republican Party, which tells me a great deal. Which tells me a great deal. Yes, the Republican Party may not be perfect, but they're also not as good of a weapon for the globalist agenda, which tells me that they're, they're still better. But the Democratic Party is. And I, I always support policies to me, I'm nonpartisan. I don't really care about Republican or Democrat. I think that we should, we're all just Americans and we should just do what's best for all of us. So I think that that whole partisanship is, is absolutely ridiculous and it's just another way to divide and conquer, which was also instigated by, by the starting of the Democratic Party because <laughs> they're evil. So way back when, this was their first move on the chessboard. <laughs> but, but you guys need to realize that when I approach, I look at policies and the democratic policies in general that they put forth always are the worst for my family in its, in its totality, right? Let's say there's 10 policies. Eight of them are gonna suck for my family. If they come from the democratic party and the Republican party, it'll only be like four of them that suck. So neither of them are perfect, but I'd rather vote for six policies that are gonna really, really work for my family moving forward than vote for the two that the democratic party is pushing. And just look at the history. You don't want to believe me. Look at, look at the history. Look at the last 24 months under democratic rule. <laughs> that should tell you everything. But this whole thing with California is absolutely ridiculous. 
Um, so you guys do what you feel is best. I encourage you all to research and listen to multiple information outlets. Don't just listen to CNN. Don't just listen to Fox. Don't just listen to MSNBC. Listen to multiple. Dive into ground news. There's um, 1440 Daily. Look at The Blaze. I look at Louder or Crowder. I look at all kinds of different, different things. I'll even look at the view. It's really hard to stomach, but you know, if I just get some Pepto-Bismol and, and watch the view, I won't throw up because they're horrible. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. But I still want to listen to them. And then what I do once I get all information, imagine that. I get all this information and then I cross-reference it and then I take it all in and then I come up with my own, my own thoughts on it. Once I get it from multiple sources and I look for patterns and I look for consistency and I ask myself, is this an information source that I've vetted that, that at least is trying to be factually correct? And are they encouraging me as I'm encouraging you to even, even not believe them, but to research them as well? Or are they telling me whatever we say is the best and just believe us. And if we say it, then it's information. If they say it, it's misinformation. <laughs> So I encourage all of you, please live your own lives. Hold, hold yourself accountable for your own decisions and your own risk assessment. And in order to do that, you have to know. Don't just be told. Don't just be obedient. That does not make you an autonomous person. It makes you an automaton. Don't just beep, more beep, beep. This is what they told me to do. Don't do that. Okay? Because you will have to live with the consequences and so will your family. Okay? But this California thing, please open up your eyes. Come on now.